What's up YouTube? Finally got an electric car and with that I needed to install a wireless level 2 charger. I went with the Emporia brand one and in this video I'm going to go over what I did to DIY the install of the line. All of the other videos I watched prepping for this had very short runs. They had the breaker power box in the garage, you know, right next to where they wanted their charger. So it wasn't much of a run for them. Um, the car I got is a 2024 Subaru Solterra limited trim. Um, they're leasing really cheap right now. And I think that's because there've been a couple bad reviews on it lately with the poor range that it gets along with slow level three charging at the fast chargers, DC fast charging. But I don't really take this car far. I work from home. There is another car usually here uh, that we'll use on longer trips. And it just, I don't think the, the two big negatives on this car really apply to me. So anyway, we love it so far. It's comfortable. I test drove an Ionic 5 uh, and ball wheel drive one, and it was fun in a fast line, very fast, but it felt like a boat. The suspension with all that weight didn't, it wasn't done right. Also, it was a lot smaller than this car and it was more expensive. So anyway, I got the Emporia charger. It's $400. Um, it is up to 48 amps that it can do. However, if you connect a, um, if you connect the app to it, you can reduce it down, which I've done to 32 amps. And when you do a 32 amp run, you need 25% of buffer in all of your wires and connectors. So basically it's a 40 amp run that I have here to the charger to support 32 amps of charging. So the box took about 40 minutes to run to mount on the wall here. Uh, it's just a couple screws. Um, the included drywall anchors were total junk. Don't use those. They, um, Basically, the instructions tell you to strip out way too big of a hole with a too big of a drill bit. And then the anchors just spin in the wall, and if you push any harder, they poke through the wall. So, totally useless junk. Um, I'll show the ones to get later. So, uh, it comes with this whip installed uh, with six gauge wire, because you'll need that if you want to get the full 48 amps um, out of this. Um, I do need one more clamp to hold this on the wall. I just didn't, I only ordered them for three quarter inch EMT and this is fatter than that. So um, from there the whip goes into a four inch electrical box. Um, there's a lock nut here holding it in that I had to buy and a plastic bushing to protect the wire. Uh, this is the only point here where I had to um, connect two wires together. Uh, I ordered eight gauge wire because eight gauge wire can handle um, the 40 amps just fine. Uh, it's THHN wire. It's $35 for 50 feet at Home Depot, or you can buy it by the foot and pay a little more per foot. Uh, I'll show the wing nuts here. Let's see if there's a size or something on here. Just high leverage wing nuts. And on the packaging here, it'll say like one to two number six, six gauge wires or two to three of uh, eight gauge. So inside this box here, I've got the wing nuts connecting my THHN wire. And then on the ground in particular, there is a pigtail with screw that you can buy from Home Depot also. Because you are supposed to ground the box whenever you make a connection inside of it. Um, from there, I ran three quarter inch EMT, which is about $10 per 10 feet of it. Um, this here is an offset and I would say the only catch on using the offset and the offset is required to get the EMT closer to the wall because it doesn't flex. Um, the catch on the offsets is it really reduces um, what you can put through the tubing for wiring. It's very tight. Um, if you were going to use all six gauge wire, I would not do three quarter inch if you're going to throw in um, an offset. I think per the charts, the EMT three quarter inch can take technically three six gauge wires. And, um, but the offsets kill that. Um, Home Depot did make a mistake in my order. They did accidentally send me um, six gauge instead of eight gauge, but going to a thicker wire is not a problem. It just made it tighter. Um, and also on the ground, I ordered eight gauge, but I could have done 10 gauge. And I think even 12 gauge, you're allowed to go down two gauges from what your main wires are. 
Uh, and that's just because if there is some kind of event where the ground is used, it's usually just for a split second or whatnot until um, the breaker goes off. So from there, I use the screw type EMT. There are other types of it. Um, cut the tubing, strapped it. You're supposed to strap it within three feet of a junction box. Um, I bought 90 degree bends instead of using the tool because it's kind of like a rector set. It just makes it easier to um, pull out if you need to make a change. From there, we just cruised along the ceiling here, um, cutting tubes to length, putting the 90s in, strapping them on. And then we came to another junction point where we had to poke through the wall. And to do that, first off, we could use an offset, but uh, we wanted to test out a bending tool and we were able to make one that worked good, especially since we could see the offsets were making it tighter. So uh, we ended up getting another four inch junction box here. That one's got the cover on it, but really all that's happening in there is that the wire is going into the box and poking through the wall. Uh, to get through the wall, you need a nipple with threads. Um, this is an eight inch nipple, which works for a two by six construction. You're seeing door trim here making it extra wide, but if you have two by four wall you're trying to get through, you'd probably want a six inch nipple. And to hold those uh, junction boxes in place, um, I bought Home Depot's version of these anchors and they were just total garbage. The um, anchors themselves didn't have a hole in, so as soon as the screw hit it, it would just spin the anchor in place and strip it out. I also happened to have bought whatever these are, and soon brand from Amazon because I didn't think the Home Depot ones were going to come in time and these actually worked out perfect. They were thicker, they went in stronger, and they did not strip out when I put the screws in. So I'll put a link to those in the description. I think that's the only thing that came from Amazon. The rest was Home Depot or Lowe's local. So anyway, um, poking through the wall. Let's go into the room here. Coming out through here, right next to the electrical panel. Uh, I opted to go to the side of the panel instead of above, so I wasn't drilling through uh, plywood there. But this is just another four inch box with a lid and the wire literally comes out and goes sideways. Uh, we did not strap this here because it's within three feet. It is actually off the side, off the wall because this box is pushed out a little bit too far because of this plywood. So um, between using a straight pipe with an offset, it fit perfect. So inside the box, it goes to a 40 amp breaker. This sub panel here is on a 60 amp um, breaker and there isn't really anything besides a hot tub on it. Everything else uses like minimal, minimal amperage. So we weren't too concerned about that, especially where we're only doing 32 amps uh, and only running it at night really for charging. So 40 amp breaker, if you are running a NEMA 1450 outlet to your garage, you can't use a regular breaker. You have to buy the expensive GFCI one that's like $120. And if your area has adopted 2023 net code, um, even if you're running it direct to a charger like I am, you are also supposed to use the expensive GFCI breaker. So my area uh, is still on 2020 code, so that isn't required yet, but that is a change. And also want to cut in here to say the reason I have the cover off on this isn't just to show in the video here. It is uh, because as charging, uh, I've been checking the temperature on all the wires and the wing nuts, making sure that connection is smooth. Uh, we did try and pre-twist the wires before capping them to get a slightly better connection. And then don't forget to put in the bushings anytime there is a connection. So there's a bushing Back there, there's one in that box there, there's one on the other side, and uh, one on the other side and one on the inside here where it goes into the box. So, I just wanna throw in a couple little pieces here. So um, wherever there's a connection, that's called a coupler. We got the screw type couplers. Um, and like I said, we were strapping uh, every three feet from a junction box. You're only required, I think, every 10 feet on a run um, but in our case, we just wanted the support and it wasn't a big deal. Other than that, the install went pretty smooth. We did all of the EMT 
first. Then we um, used a vacuum to suck a piece of string through. We just used string. And uh, from there, we were able to electrical tape the wire and pull it through. And it was kind of a fight. And the fight on that, I believe, was entirely due to the offset wanting to pinch the wires. Um, I wish I had one that I already returned the extra one that we didn't use, but if you look through it, you know, you can see like in the kink there, it just like shrinks right down. It's not three quarter inch. So the charger itself, this one comes with a nice sturdy, feels like a metal arm. Um, lifts up on the Subaru, the door is push open. It's a nice lighted bay here. Plugs in and that's it. Probably not going to do anything because the battery is fully charged and I have timing set up, but um, that's it. In the app, I can see it's pulling 7,200 watts um, where I have it limited to 32 amps. And I don't know if that's the car keeping it from hitting 7,400 watts. That would be the full 32 amps. Um, so far, we've been able to keep it so topped up that the battery is always like, I don't know, 88 to 90% when we plug it in. So I would imagine if I was closer to 20 or 30%, it might actually draw more wattage. So just haven't been able to test that. The cord that this comes with, it is really stiff. That part, not too fun. Um, I don't know if maybe if I'd gotten a charger that was only 32 amp capable, if it would have come with a thinner wire, but all right, that's what I ended up with. Let me know in the description if you have any questions, in the comments if you have any questions. And um, eventually here I'll do a video on this car because it's actually pretty sweet. Minus no glove box, that's kind of strange. Also carpet on the dash, kind of strange. But other than that, it's got a lot more space than my Subaru WRXs I've been driving for the last 12 years. Um, and at low speed, it's definitely more peppy than a WRX. So don't feel like I was losing too much in doing the trade in here. Plus I don't have to buy premium fuel anymore. Um, on this car, I'm getting 3.7 miles per kilowatt in the city. The lowest I've seen is on the highway at 78 miles per hour in the rain in 45 degree weather. I was getting only 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which on a 70 amp hour, 70 watt hour battery, that is, you know, less than 130 miles or so, especially if you factor in there's some reserve that the car doesn't let you use. Uh, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.